Bassmaster Elite rookie angler JT Tompkins has been disqualified from the St. Lawrence River. That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button. And let me just say thank you to all the new subscribers, all of the people who comment, who are interactive on the channel. I really, really appreciate it. I enjoy hearing your side and your opinions and attempting to reply to all of them. So continue to comment and let me just say thank you again. But if you're not a subscriber, click that button, become part of the team and family. Here's what we know. JT failed his polygraph Friday afternoon. So JT was disqualified from the St. Lawrence River Tournament for failure to pass his polygraph. Now these polygraphs are given randomly to anglers to make sure that there's a level playing field and that you're not doing things wrong or cheating. So the polygraph was done after Friday's events and he was disqualified for the whole tournament after it. He failed to pass inspections on rule C3II or 2 and C314. The C3 rule states, and I have to read it, an angler cannot gather waypoints or specific fishing locations from any source that is not publicly available. The C314 states, during competition days, anglers may not log onto websites or participate in social media with the intent of gaining com a competitive advantage. Those are the two rules that JT failed in his polygraph. Now, allegedly, there was a Bass Pro Tour official that sold these waypoints or these spots to JT. And while I sit here and have filmed this for the third time, I have so many more questions than I did from the first video I did. Now, these are just questions that come up when you start thinking about doing something like this. Or first off, why would he do something like this? I should say this has been part of the issue with this rookie class. And it's not all of the rookies. Let me just make that very clear. There seems to be just a few of them that seem to not only not know the rules, but they seem to want to skirt the, air, the gray area. And there is no gray area. There's black and white. You do something wrong, you should be disqualified or should have a penalty. And I start to question if the anglers don't think that the penalty is that harsh that they try to make these, that they try to get this advantage over the other anglers. And while I appreciate that Bass has gone out and told us exactly what happened, and I really like that, are the punishments harsh enough? And again, thank you to Bass for, for putting out the press release and telling us about this. And these rookie anglers are under a microscope at all times because they have come out and done so well this year that it is, people are saying, how can this happen? How can a rookie class be this good, this fast? But here's some of my questions. First off, why would a major league fishing, if this is, if he purchased the, the spots from a major league fishing official, why would that person do that? There's enough heated stuff between Bass and MLF that this makes no sense to me. Next, was that information that he was able to get shared with any other anglers? Even though the other anglers weren't the main person, is that information, was that information that was gathered helping other anglers? Because we do know that the anglers do talk to each other. They talk strategy, they talk what's going on. But in a time when these rookies are under an unbelievable microscope, it really makes less sense that they keep making some of these stupid mistakes. And let's be flatline and clear. This is cheating. And I'm not sure the punishment fits the crime. I understand being disqualified for one tournament, but I think there should be more that goes on here. Because I think you need to set an example that this is not allowed. Because we know for almost a fact that some of these rookie anglers, not all of them, just a handful of them, were able to get information during the off season when they shouldn't have. But at that point in time, it wasn't a rule and they took advantage of that. But where does it stop? If we wanna have a fair competitive field where everyone's on a level playing field, this is something that needs to stop immediately. But I also understand that this is probably the hardest rule to enforce. Will we ever know the honest to goodness truth? Or are we just gonna hear rumors and conspiracy theories and some of these are dead on right you have to give it up to the people who know their shit because they're in the real in they're hearing from anglers or hearing the rumors that end up becoming 
100% truth. But will we ever find out the true reason? Will he, JT, speak up and say, this is what happened? Because if he did purchase, allegedly, he did purchase those points from an MLF official, why would the MLF official do that? And how much were they? That's really the, that's the thing that makes, that has me question myself. If, if an MLF official sold those waypoints to JT, how much was it? How many spots did he give him? I, that's, that's really the biggest thing I want to know. I don't know if we'll ever hear the truth to it because I think it only hurts JT a little bit more. And also that MLF official, it probably hurts him, him or her quite a bit too. But in a year that's been mired with tons of controversy for these rookies, and they come into the last tournament of the season where it's an absolute, unstoppable, amazing, great tournament, and we have Rick Clun leaving. This is going to be the thing that we're, that the St. Lawrence River is known for. This tournament disqualification will live on for a long time. And rookie anglers or anglers need to really think about their legacy and their reputation. And these anglers, these rookie anglers, come in with such an amazing, ridiculously great class. And they keep having these small, tiny things all over. It takes away from all of them. As much as the one guy that's doing everything right, and he's in this rookie class, he's catching heat for the mistakes that the other guys are doing or the cheating that these other guys are doing. And it's unfortunate that they're in the same group as some of these guys that are doing or skirting the rules. And it hurts us as an industry overall. It hurts bass. It hurts the anglers. It hurts everybody. But does the punishment fit the crime? Also, how much are you selling those spots for? That's what I want to know. Is 500 bucks enough? Is thousand dollars enough how much are those spots because it really if someone has some spots for for a pop guy i could use them that's a joke i'm joking i don't fish tournaments but it's a joke but what do you think comment below and tell me what you think thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button i really do appreciate it remember take a kid fishing get your fish on i'll talk to you very very soon third time might be a charm cheers and that was my stomach i'll talk to you soon